To describe Morgan as old school would be something of an understatement. This is a company that has been making cars out of the same glorified shed in Worcestershire since 1914. A company that still uses wood in the construction of their vehicles. A company where if you work here and you use words like self-driving or augmented reality, you'll be beaten with a stick made of wood, of course. But everyone, even these old boys, must move with the times and embrace electrification. And that's why we've been invited here today to have a look at something rather special. Welcome to The Fully Charged Show. If you like The Fully Charged Show, you will love our Everything Electric exhibitions around the world. Next up, Everything Electric Australia. And Everything Electric London. Get your tickets today. So then, this is what we've come here to see today. Welcome to the Morgan XP1. It's an electric three-wheeler. Now, just to be very clear at the top, what it's not is a production car. This is not destined for customer purchase anytime soon. What it is, is Morgan's guinea pig. They are going to practice on this thing. They're going to fiddle and tweak and test and adjust and drive it lots and lots and lots and basically use this to get really good at making electric cars really, really fun. Interesting to note, incidentally, that Morgan's first two electric test beds that have been made public have both had three wheels. I wonder how many wheels their first production electric car might have. Pure speculation. But let's start by just having a mosey around this car, getting some information on what this thing is and what's underneath the hood. And we have the perfect chap to take us around this car, Matthew Hole, Chief Technical Officer. Hello, Matthew. Hello. How are you today? I'm excellent, thank you. This is extremely pretty. First question, most important question, does it still have wooden bits? No. <gasps> yep, so uh, when we moved to the, uh, the all aluminium monocoque in the Super 3, I dread to say that uh, that was kind of the departure of wood in the three-wheeler platform. We still have a lot of wood in the four-wheel cars, but yeah, for the three-wheeler platform, there's no wood. So everything in this, uh, in this XP1 kind of prototype has kind of been pared down really to the bare minimum to reduce weight really kind of at, at all costs. And just to dispel an urban myth while we're here, wood in the frame of the uh, four-wheeled cars, not in the chassis. People it's in the chassis. That'd in, be a terrible it, idea. In the frame, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we are traditional coach builders, and so yeah, we have a wooden frame that's then hand dressed in aluminium. So it's kind of the body of the car, really, rather than the actual structural chassis underneath, which is uh, a modern bonded aluminium uh, structure. So very stiff. Sensible, sensible selection yeah, of material. So, yeah. so this is not the first time we've seen an electric three-wheeler. I believe Robert drove the EV3 concept in 2015 That's on true. the channel. Um, and then we're back here with this. What makes the three-wheeler such an ideal electric car testbed or so suited to electric power in your opinion? So from an electrification perspective, um, one of the main elements is that it's not very complex. So some of the things that we don't have to encounter are managing things like heating and ventilation systems. This particular uh, car doesn't have uh, power assisted steering, so we don't need an e-pass system. It doesn't have servo assisted brakes, and so we don't need an e-booster for the brakes. So actually, uh, for us, where we really want to concentrate on the high voltage system and also on the software, we don't have to kind of worry and re-engineer a lot of the other kind of ancillary components that are actually quite complex to integrate. So it's allowing kind of what, we have a small team at Morgan, so it allows our team to really kind of focus on the bits that we want to learn them out, and rather than some of the things that we, we don't need to uh, encounter just yet. Absolutely, and one of the things that's really exciting about this car is that it's the first drivetrain developed here in-house by Morgan. Historically, the engine has been borrowed from other brands, but this is all Morgan, so talk me through it. Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah, so historically for, for petrol engine cars, we had engines from companies like Ford, BMW, uh, back in the ages, or Fiat. For this program, uh, we really, really wanted to uh, take the opportunity that electrification is giving us to cherry pick the components that really allow us to kind of get the core DNA of the product, which is kind of hopefully lightweight and fun to drive. Uh, so to that end, uh, we've selected uh, a separate motor and inverter from two different manufacturers. Uh, we've brought them together uh, specifically for this project. They've been tuned and calibrated for the first time on this project. So to that end, it truly is kind of a Morgan, a Morgan powertrain. Uh, we've developed energy storage system uh, with one of our partners. It's a, another uh, element of the design that's been done by Morgan. So it's been designed by Morgan, integrated by Morgan. And to that end, in, to be honest, the entire high voltage electrical architecture in XP1 is designed and developed by Morgan. 
In the front we've got a 33 kilowatt hour battery. It's positioned in the same place as the uh, engine. Uh, it's a similar-ish mass to the engine and transmission. We've chosen uh, purposefully to put it uh, out front. Uh, that benefits the kind of vehicle dynamics of a three-wheeler, so you, it's really good to have kind of the weight at the front of the car in, 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 in between the front axle, the front wheels, and kind of the, a three-wheeler really pivots around its kind of front axle. Mm. It's a 33 kilowatt hour battery. It's supplying uh, its energy to a 100 kilowatt motor. So the motor's 340 newton meters. That is quite a lot in a small car like this. <laughs> it is, it is a lot. It gives it a lot of shove. Uh, one of the benefits of having such a powerful motor, it's a little bit more powerful than the, uh, the petrol engine in the Super 3, is it's allowing our engineers to kind of play around with the calibration of the motor and kind of decide how much is enough. And it, for some people, you know, you always want a bit more, but I think what we're trying to do with this project is uh, is in, find an EV, find the sweet spot with an EV that just really encapsulates kind of engagement while driving and fun to drive. And to that end, it's allowing our engineers to kind of dial up and dial down things like the amount of regen, uh, but also, you know, the amount of uh, attractive effort. One of the interesting kind of uh, elements of the product is that uh, we've managed to uh, calibrate the motor and the inverter to create quite a specific sound. Oh. And so this is something that we're kind of, we're, we know is really important for Morgan going forward and it's part of the engagement. And so, uh, yeah, we have kind of a distinctive sound that has been engineered as part of this product. It's a completely authentic sound. It, you know, it's the sound of the inverter. It's the sound of the electricity going through the inverter and the motor, but it's, it's a really authentic sound. And I, I think hopefully it's something that we're kind of playing with and developing. Uh, and hopefully that's something that will, you know, satisfy potential customers of electric Morgans in the future. Okay, so that drivetrain, that's really the star of the show here. I think that's the, the main story is that it's going to be a work in progress. You're going to be fettling with this and just yeah. developing it over time, really figuring out how to make it as exciting as it can be. It, it looks much like a regular Super 3 uh, to the untrained eye, but there are a few other tweaks to the bodywork and the design, aren't there? I think it's quite slippery compared to the ICE car. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. So the, uh, the current Super 3 has a drag coefficient of uh, 0.65. Uh, and through a load of uh, CFD iterations and a load of development, including, you know, really kind of enhancing Morgan's CFD capability, uh, we managed to get the drag coefficient down to uh, 0.42. And so it's a real kind of big step. Uh, kind of ke the keen eye will notice that there are, uh, there are disc covers uh, on the front wheel. Mm -hmm. There are various kind of air handling features around the car. There are various kind of ducts. Uh, this car has a completely flat floor uh, uh, and a, an entirely enclosed uh, rear section where the Super 3 is open has a little deflector in front of the rear uh, uh, the rear tire and there are lots of kind of small wins that add up to quite a big gain overall so you know it's a much slipperier car than the uh, Super 3 uh, and also it generates slightly less airborne noise mm. which is another kind of important element to kind of investigate I think as we go and look at open top EVs going forward. So 33 kilowatt hour battery yeah. B barely 600 kilo curb weight, quite aerodynamic. That's a recipe for a pretty usable amount of range. Not that this thing is designed for long distance driving, of course. Yeah, and re range kind of, ha it sounds strange to say for a, uh, an EV project that range wasn't uh, uh, kind of one of the uh, main goals of this project. It was really about kind of putting the fun into driving. But what we have done uh, throughout this project is we, we developed some new simulation tools and we've used those to predict what the vehicle will do. And this project was really about designing a system and then building a car that was basically true to kind of the simulation work that we've done. And to that end, I'm actually pleased to say that even in November, it does about four miles per kilowatt hour, which means on the 33 kilowatt hour battery, uh, it's getting up to about 130 miles of range. So, you know, even in, in a kind of the cold uh, Malvern winter. So, we're really perform uh, pleased with the performance of it uh, and uh, you know it for us it's it's a usable amount of range i say not the goal of the project but a usable amount of range i think anyone that does 130 miles in any morgan three-wheeler deserves some sort of prize at the end of it you, yeah i think you're definitely ready ready for a break yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think something that people really overlook when it comes to car brands transitioning to electric is that process of educating and retraining staff. And I know that that's a big part of what this car is as well. It's all about helping the very small Morgan team learn about electric vehicles and how to work on them. Do you think people overlook just how big of a challenge that is uh, in, in when it comes to this transition? I, I think so. You know, there's, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to go into a company to enable it to build uh, electric cars. 
safely and repeatedly. And so to that end, uh, all the, the entire engineering team actually, so not just the guys who are working on the cars day in, day out and building them are EV trained. Mm -hmm. They've been through EV awareness training uh, and the whole development team uh, uh, within Morgan who have access to the vehicle are high voltage trained. So they are able to uh, assemble and disassemble uh, high voltage components, but also they're able to safely power up and power down an EV. So in the eventuality that you have uh, some defective components, you're able to deal with these things safely. So building that awareness within the company uh, and that knowledge, but also more importantly, all the processes that you need to go through, uh, which is, you know, it's a long and laborious process, but it, it has to be done. Uh, is you know, something that having a test bed and a vehicle to work on uh, is, you know, it's, it's so valuable. So what happens next, Matt? What, how, what's destined for this car and when might we see a, an um, electric Morgan customer car? I saw it can't be drawn on the electric uh, c uh, cars for customers. However, this, this car will be seen out and about and we're very keen to get it in the hands of uh, customers, in the hands of uh, uh, journalists like yourself. Um, we are going to add to the feature content. So uh, I'm you know, pleased to say it'll soon have bi-directional charging. So it'll be able to power uh, additional devices, uh, be able to charge back to the grid. Uh, there are loads of other little features, extra feature content that we're going to add, and we're going to continue kind of calibrating and trying to kind of enhance this fun to drive. So, so watch this space. Uh, it'll be, uh, it'll hopefully be available for uh, more and more people to kind of see and access and use. And we're hoping kind of that feedback will, uh, you know, inspire us going forward and also inform us on uh, how to develop all the systems, etc., and software. Uh, that, that we'll need for, for that future Morgan car when it arrives. So we've just had a very quick tour of the inside of the Morgan factory. I say very quick because it doesn't take very long. It's not very big. Essentially, there's a room where people saw bits of wood. There's a room where people hit aluminium with a hammer. And then there's a room where those two things are turned into cars. I've never been anywhere quite like it. It is absolutely magical. And the fact that a company like Morgan, these champions of traditional coach building, are embracing electrification earlier than they really need to, is so, so exciting to me. You might think they're a bit late to the game, but we have to remember these tiny sports car brands, they can go last as far as transitioning to electric. Commuter vehicles, delivery vehicles, those are the top priority as far as transitioning to electric. Low volume sports cars, they can sort of go last. And so to that end, I would say that Morgan are right on schedule. With that being said, I cannot wait to have a go in that electric three-wheeler. So I do wish they'd hurry up a little bit for personal reasons. We'll have to come back soon. That's the only option I see. Oh no. Ah oh well. Please do make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thanks for watching.